Welcome back. Uh, yeah, I'm doing this one from the hockey set. Um, wife has company over. It's more better sound in here for one and just more privacy in here uh, than in the other room that I use for the Entertainment Guy videos. Um, and if you're looking for a, a preview of the World Cup final that's going to take place on Sunday, I do plan on doing that later today as well. Um, or it could be tomorrow morning, but probably later today. So I want to talk about the Mandy Rose firing, uh, WWE firing. And, and it, it, it is interesting because this is at a time where Vince McMahon may very well be coming back, which is a terrible idea. It, it's, it's a terrible idea on every front, the idea of bringing Vince back. But then firing Mandy while Vince could be returning is just, it, it is one of those mind-blowing moments, right? Uh, so she's fired and apparently on her, her fan time account, which is basically, it's it's like OnlyFans is what it is. Um, she's been posting uh, more and more racy material. And some of it's leaked out that's supposed to be behind another paywall, um, which is basically nude photos, that kind of thing. And, and so WWE was like, no, we've got to, you know, she's got to make up her mind. Now there's there's two angles with this. One, uh, she refused to stop making that content. And I kind of understand why. Um, apparently, the money she makes off that content uh, is the same amount of money she would make if she was on the main roster. And she does that without having to, uh, you know, take bumps and without having to worry about messing up her neck or her back or whatever else, right? Uh, this is a much safer job to, to you know, get in a bikini and sit in a pool and, hey, take pictures. Sure. That's a much safer scenario. Um, but it, it it does show that the the control that they have over their wrestlers, and it's something I've never really agreed with, and here's why. Uh, they are still listed as independent contractors. They're not actually listed as WWE employees. Uh, if they were listed as WWE employees, we might have something else to talk about. But they're independent contractors in name only. Uh, WWE doesn't allow them to perform for other companies, regularly pulls wrestlers from other companies who might have belts in those companies and don't seem to care because their universe is that. So when they talk about the WWE universe, I consider it to be like their own little bubble where only they exist. AEW is not a thing. Impact doesn't exist. Other companies don't exist. Uh, you'll see a wrestler come into WWE who's been an impact for five years or been off in Japan for five years. And they're like, yeah, so they left the business for a while. And it's like, no, they didn't. They've or, and, they, and they talk like, what have they been up to? We know what they've been up to. Wrestling fans know. But they act like nothing exists outside of their bubble, which is why when AEW and other companies mention uh, other companies, and they mention one another, people are like, wow, they're, that's that whole forbidden door thing, right? It's It shouldn't be. That shouldn't be a thing. Um, it is this weird wrestling thing where you just don't talk about the other companies. I, I'm not sure why that is. But coming back to Mandy, um, I, I think it's weird that a company would say, well, this is this is against our guidelines. And, and if you're going to say, well, it's, it's, it's inappropriate behavior, fine. But it's all behind a paywall and it's not meant for anybody under the age of 18. So it's all meant for adults. Uh, also, this is a company that has wrestlers who have been... Um, you know, convicted of DUIs kind of thing, uh, who in some cases are still employed. And I find it, I, I, I just find that weird because she's not doing anything illegal. We can all have the debate about morality, fine. But morality seems to be different in, in one area of the world from another. I remember when I was, when I was a kid, and teenager especially, um, we started getting more racy content on CBC. So late at night, there was more of the French movies. And of course, movies out of France, well, I mean, you know, sexuality is not considered a big deal, but over here, obviously. So it was it was like we would we would talk at school. Like, did you see that movie? I didn't, I don't know what anybody was saying, but man, that movie, that was that was that was insane, right? And when I see this this morality clause that apparently Mandy breaks, um, I, I just feel like it's it's it feels like it's something that we worry more about in North America than they do anywhere else. I know it's not everywhere else, but it feels like in a lot of cases this is stuff that wouldn't be considered a big deal throughout a lot a lot of Europe. We'll just say a lot of Europe. Certain parts of Asia as well wouldn't be considered any kind of a big deal. And again, you've got wrestlers who have done illegal things that are still employed. 
Uh, there are wrestlers that back back in the day, and I know we can talk about how the rules have changed and whatnot, but back in the day there were um, accusations out there about certain wrestlers and domestic uh, scenarios that weren't necessarily flattering to the company. It was just all kind of swept under the rug. Vince McMahon, part of the reason that he's coming back is because he figures that uh, he got bad advice and everything would have blown over. I don't think it will in the day and age of, of social media, but maybe it does, right? So for for a company to potentially have Vince back running things, which is a bad idea because under Triple H, WWE has been in just very, very much more watchable as a product. And the storylines have had real payoffs. And we've started to see matches with real finishes as well. You bring, bring back uh, uh, Vince, we're going to know right away because... Uh, the twenty four seven title would probably get be get be brought back. We'd get more of the just the ridiculous dumb things, random tag teams being thrown together for no reason, uh, booking decisions that make absolutely no sense, and bad gimmicks being brought back for wrestlers who've shed some bad gimmicks uh, since Vince left. So, I I just find it weird to see this with Mandy and and. This is not that long after uh, Paige went to AEW because they're going to let her wrestle. Uh, it doesn't look like WWE were going to. And of course, Paige had her own scandal that I think I think the Paige scandal was, was worse. And it, it doesn't take uh, a lot of Google searching to look that up. I'm not going to get into it here. But I, I thought what happened with Paige was worse. Although with Paige, they were leaked. And so that's where the whole argument would come out as well of if it's leaked content, is that as bad? My argument would be, well, no, however, the morality clause could have been used there, and I, I don't know if it should have been, but for Mandy, it sounds like she may have wanted out anyways, and yeah, I, I just find it really odd that they would put the belt on her in NXT, they'd build her up for over a year. Uh, Mandy Rose, is a at, when she started out in WWE, I rolled my eyes a lot because... I felt like she was just a model who was just trying to make some money in wrestling and then take off and do something else. Um, I remember I, I watched some of the the Total Divas stuff. I eventually, I just couldn't watch that anymore. But she just seemed really not interested in the wrestling side of it, more interested in the self-promotion, which is fine. There are definitely wrestlers who are male and female that are more worried about the self-promotion than the actual learning the wrestling, getting through uh, matches and, and figuring out new moves and all that fun stuff and getting their character over. But over the last couple of years, she's, she's earned a lot of respect for me in how she, how she's built this character. Toxic Attraction was a fun little, uh, group that she had there. I thought that was great. I thought it was great that Gigi got brought in. I know, um, that wasn't her name before, but Gigi Dolan, who there was a lot of talk about, oh, she's, does she belong in wrestling? Not that long ago, and and she's proved that yes, she does belong in wrestling, and it works. So hopefully, the other two members of Toxic Attraction end up on the main roster immediately, and they get a push into the tag belts, which have gone completely missing from Raw and SmackDown. The women's tag titles, I could see Hunter getting rid of those. I I could see it, or actually building up the division. You have to do one or the other. So. The fact the belts haven't been on lately tells me he might be leaning towards getting rid of them. But I think there's some value to the women's tag belts. I just, this is a this is a company that used to make a big deal about uh, a diva every year posing in Playboy. And they were called divas. They weren't called women's wrestlers. They were called divas. And it was more along the lines of, right, okay, so you're a model. Well, we'll teach you to wrestle. Rather than you're a wrestler, we'll teach you how to get into the sports entertainment side of it. And they, they seem to, over the years, have less patience with the actual wrestlers than they do with the models, where the models will get endless chances because they're like, well, yeah, she's not that good in the ring, but she's hot. So if we could work on some, some of this stuff, we, we can get her over. Whereas the other way around, they could say, well, she's a good wrestler, but the crowd doesn't care and look at her. She's not as good looking as that one, so why are we going to keep her? That's how it's felt to me anyways. But let me know your thoughts. Did they make the right call? Did they make the wrong call? And again, I, I know what's out there. I know what, what, what's what been coming out from behind that paywall and all that. And I do understand that her material was getting a little more uh, extreme for WWE's liking. But I, I, I don't know. You know, the morality clause to me is a weird thing 
in a company where guys are pretending to beat each other up and where we do have a really checkered past and present when it comes to wrestling uh, in in how, well, all of it works, right? Uh, just, just from a society perspective, there's a lot of problematic things with wrestling. You don't have to watch that many episodes of Dark Side of the Ring before you start to ask yourself, why do I support this? And there have been times where I've watched a Dark Side of the Ring episode and thought, you know, there's this whole seedy underside to wrestling that I, I don't like. I th- and I want to close on this too. I do find it funny that all that there's a lot of talk now about how the AEW locker room is out of control because of all the infighting. And yet, when you listen to any kind of kayfabe uh, 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 discussions, you listen to, which of course is in character, but when you listen to all these documentaries from former wrestlers about who they hated and who they had backstage fights with, they were everywhere all the time. I think the difference is now with social media, we hear about it and wrestlers are discouraged from doing it. But it used to be a thing. You know, it used to be you'd, you'd go out there, you'd have a match, you'd get mad about something happened in the match and then you'd have a brawl in the back or you'd want to have a brawl in the back or somebody would pull a knife out. Like it's just, it, it, it feels like AEW in catering to wrestlers, maybe there's more chance of that happening than there is in WWE. And I hope for Mandy's sake that she she finds another company that will allow her to produce her content that makes her a ton of money. Um, one thing is, I did notice with her, her fan time page, so it'll show just the likes. You don't need to be signed in or anything. But it'll show you the likes. And at the time that she got fired, first time I looked at it, it said 11,000 likes for the page. Last time I looked, which was earlier today, just to see how many more she gets, 15,200. So... If the cost is $30 a month, and if she has gained 4,000 paid subscribers since they fired her a couple of days ago, I'm going to go out on a limb and say she doesn't regret her decision not to give it up. And this is this is that whole argument, too, that it, it might make it more difficult because obviously that avenue is not really there for men as much as it's there for women. Um, like if, if Becky Lynch said, well, I'll, I'll do an OnlyFans, you would have thousands of people sign up right away. Um, and and I think that's that's the thing. Some of these women may very well be able to make more money doing that than they do may, with wrestling. We can all have the debates over the morality anytime we want, but could that then erode women's wrestling and how it's viewed if there's women that are doing that instead or on top of their wrestling content? I'd be interested to know your thoughts because I, I don't think Mandy's going to be the last one. I do think part of this may very well have been WWE saying, okay, we've got to... We've got a lot of women on the roster who are who are trying their best to, you know, uh, get their social media reach up there. We got to let them know there's a line. Maybe that's part of what happened here. The thing that I find funny is that immediately I was seeing comments along the lines of, "Well, she'll go. They'll probably bring her back." And yes, they probably will at some point in time. She'll get brought back, whether it's in a an alumni rumble uh, match. But then why fire her if you're going to bring her back later? It's one of the weirdest things. Is that they will they'll have somebody who gets you know ousted for whatever reason, and then they just bring him back, and it's like nothing happened. Um, there are definitely wrestlers with some checkered past that they just get brought back, and it's like, hey, look, they're back, yay, and we just forget. Well, why fire him in the first place if we're just going to forget anyways? But I'd be interested to know your thoughts, and does that play into Vince's idea that well, it all would blow over anyways? Are you okay with the idea that uh, Mandy got fired here? Uh, with her taking a stand, and honestly, again, she may have just wanted out of that contract anyways. Um, I would be kind of surprised if that's all it was, though, because she she her wrestling did get better. Uh, the last few matches I saw of hers in NXT, she is miles above where she was four years ago. She is nowhere near where she was. Uh, I thought the dark hair suited her. I thought her new look worked for her in the ring. I thought the whole toxic attraction thing was perfect. I thought it, it just it worked, and... I'll be interested to see what happens with her in another company. Do they let her play that same kind of a character? Would they ever play a different kind of character? Would she be a heel? Would she be a face? The right answer should be heel. I think she works best as a heel, but let me know your thoughts on that as well. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And happy holidays, everybody. I am wearing my Ramstein Christmas sweater because you have to have... Why don't you have a Ramstein Christmas sweater? I figured it's a good time to wear it. So thank you guys so much for all your support and uh, all the best to everybody out there. I will talk to you again soon.